Well, it's, it's not surprising. In fact, it's totally predictable uh, what has happened. That if you look at what's happened with COVID vaccination, it was introduced basically the beginning of 2021. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, a lot of people did uh, the various studies, um, not randomised controlled trials because they weren't, uh, they were observational studies. And many of them were quite good. And there was a consistency showing significant benefit against serious disease. 80, 90% sometimes. I find that hard to believe, but that, that, that's the data. Now, um, that data has been used to argue for continued vaccination today. Yes. And, and, and I think, I think this, exactly. this is a really critical problem that yeah. people do not understand. And I'm yeah. talking, about, and I think genuinely they don't understand His, historical data. Oh, oh, yeah. Historical data, no, and I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the data mm. that um, a group in Quebec. Um, I know her first name Sarah because my daughter's called Sarah. I can't remember her second name, but she has led a epidemiological team which is clearly high class, and they've been doing something that not many people have been doing. They've been doing studies from 2021 to essentially late 2024, mm -hmm. uh, looking at <coughs> vaccine impact. <coughs> and uh, it's all, in, it's, anyone can look it up. Uh, it's the Quebec COVID studies. And, yep. uh, and they've been looking at the impact on serious disease, which is also yep. important. They do age stratified and disease stratified yep. uh, studies. Now, the first study was done not for any other purpose, but to see when do you need to have your second vaccine. So what in essence they had was a study over four months where they showed fantastic protection against uh, hospitalization and death. Great, really great outcome uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. They didn't do a cost benefit analysis, which if we get time, we can talk about. But what they did is they showed just looking at COVID, there was benefit. And that benefit was moderately well sustained for that four months. They then did a series of studies over the next few years, culminating in a study when the second last of the variants in the vaccines we were given, the so-called yeah. XBB 1.5, <coughs> and some people will recognise, this was the one uh, that was given mainly through 2024. But by the time the vaccine became available, the virus had moved on to major mutations. Now, two things are happening. The first and most important thing is we're changing. The, mm. We've got three variables. We've got the variable of the population. Yep. We've got the variable of the vaccine trying to catch yep. up with the variable of the infection. Yep. So we've got a dynamic process that's changed dramatically from 2021 when you still had uh, the so-called ancestral virus or variants, mm -hmm. uh, variants of that ancestral virus, where yep. the vaccine was moderately well matched. And then at mm -hmm. the end of 21, you got a big change in COVID. You got the Omicron yep. change, which was yep. more than just a point mutation. It was uh, a recombination where two different viruses got inside the same cell and they yep. swapped their genetic information. So yep. you got a big jump in the it difference. Was a, it was a shift, not a drift. It was a shi yeah, it, it was a shift, not a drift, as the, 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 the flu vaccine people would say. <clears throat> and so you had this, this dramatic change, uh, and that changed the world. You moved to something that was more remote from the vaccine. You moved to a more infectious virus that was less yep. damaging to the That's individual. That's pathogenic, yeah. And from then, we've had drifts, uh, which is little tiny changes, Every year we get significant changes. So we went from the so-called BA1s and 2s of 22, 2022. Uh, we went to the XBB, yeah. which is 23. And then we went to the JN1. I, 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 yeah. I know this is terrible, but it's so important. You just call it 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah. So by the time the XBB one and, and, and this so-called magical vaccine that can be made so quickly was always out of date. Always. So what the, the Sarah did in, sorry, Sarah, if you're ever watching this, but uh, I hope we meet because I love your work. Uh, what Sarah did in 23, she did, I think, about the fifth or sixth of her studies looking at the benefits of the XBB virus. Now, 
three things had changed. People had changed. So instead of getting, she was able to look at the protection of this virus against the XBB, which was still around. The, the, the vaccine. The, 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 vac the, old, yeah. the, vac the vaccine contained XBB, yeah. number three. But the world was moving on to number to four G and G number four. one. Yeah, yeah. So she had the opportunity of looking at the protective effect of the XBB against not just XBB, yeah. but the next one, which was JN, and the yeah. next one, which was the so-called KP variants. And so this was an incredibly important study because, uh, and of course, this was the, 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 the vaccine that was being used through that period of those three different um, uh, virus before the JN one came, and it, it was well down. That was that had, had moved on to two more by the time the JN one. Yeah, we're, we're talking about grandchildren here and great grandchildren. So to, to bear with me just a second. Mm -hmm. now, the two very important things came out of these studies. The first was that when she was using a matched virus between match between the vaccine and the um, and the community. Yep. Instead of getting 80 to 90 percent lasting uh, a full four months, she was getting around about 50 percent protection lasting a month or two. Very short protection, very hardly worthwhile protection. And this was against admission to hospital, very serious disease in Quebec. So she then had the opportunity of these people being vaccinated when the community virus had gone, the XBB had gone and a new yeah. one had come. Yeah. Oh, suddenly there was protection had dropped down to 25 to 30%, 25%, I think it was. So that was a bit worrying and it didn't last much time at all, just a couple of months. But the XBB was still in play when the third one came, these KP variants. Guess what? Zero protection. So those people who were getting vaccinated when the virus had not just replaced the XBB, but replaced the one that had replaced yeah. the XBB, the third one. Now, if you're getting 0%. 0% right? protection. Zero. No, they were getting half of those people, because, you know, you've got a, a, a spread, were getting negative protection. They were getting more admissions to hospital than... So by the time, and, and, and you, uh, I hope I'm being clear, by the time this current XBB vaccine, which we're all getting back in 2024, last year, uh, by the time it had moved on to you know, the middle of the year, later part of the year, before the JN1 came, you were getting 50% of people were more prone to getting serious infections. Yep. So, what? so w w with the with the grandchildren, the overall protection for everyone was zero percent. Yes, and that and that meant that some people were getting minimal protection, but others were getting no, no. negative protection. Negative protection. Fifty percent, fifty percent on average were getting negative protection. In other words, fifty percent were immune promoted disease, which we yeah. started talking about yeah. with RSV yeah. yeah. in a different context. Now, and and, and all really of that is ignoring the the. That's only looking at the totally minimal benefit or here zero benefit or negative benefit. And then that's ignoring the, the, the long, long, long list of, of adverse reactions from the vaccine. Absolutely. So the the risk-benefit analysis just kicked out the We're ballpark. We're talking about adverse events. We're yeah. talking about the predictable change of yeah. the population of the virus in the community yeah. and of the vaccine, which yeah. anybody who knew anything about flu and whatever could have predicted in 2020 yep. because we've had this policy a stupid policy of repeated poorly spaced vaccinations that have added to the natural infection because we've all been exposed to the virus now when you add the two up together we're getting this suppression of immunity which occurs whenever you try whenever you get a uh, inhaled virus it's very different to mumps and measles which go through the bloodstream yeah uh, you get very good very good protection and we're not talking about vaccination here we're talking about particular circumstance of a particular vaccine and we're yeah. not talking about the dangers which is another story of the messenger rna vaccine on top of the fact it's not working indeed absolutely Robert, absolutely fascinating, um, great science, and I, I just love the, the the background, the contextualization, and the history. We just, I mean, what one thing about a lot of modern 
medical, nursing, health education generally is just not enough attention paid to history. There's just so much to learn from that, apart from the fact it's just so interesting. And we do stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> we do. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least, at least, at least uh, that, that, that's what I do. I'm not, uh, <laughs> yeah, I need all the help I can get. But but tonight you've given us lots, so absolutely brilliant. And yeah, can we can we just restate that because it's so important, John? Yeah, please please do. But w what has happened is that we we started the vaccine four years ago. Yeah. And, and the, the article you're talking about, I did is like a, a five year report card of, of yeah. COVID, and I, I wanted to make just a couple of points. But the most important yeah. point I wanted to make was that what happened in 2021 four years ago yep it's totally different to what's happening totally. now 2024 20, 2025 yep. that um and and the great sadness is and i i think i'm not sure how if it's ignorance stupidity or what it is but people the political scene is picking up the data that was obtained which was good data uh, without looking at the and we haven't talked about vaccine damage today at all we're talking about the process of vaccination, uh, the science of that process, that they pick up that data of where, where there was selective value and they say, oh, you must have more vaccinations, more boosters, because look at the data, shows how valuable it is. Yeah. If you looked at the studies done by Sarah from Quebec in the time between 21 and 24, you find there's this progressive fall in... Yeah vaccine impact unrelated to the changing virus in the community. But when you add the changing virus, because our magical messenger RNA vaccines are so yep. out of date, so Double out of whammy. Date. And remember that the flu vaccine can be made in six months. Mm. And, the, and the other point that people are not aware of is that the, um, uh, when the messenger RNA vaccines came on the scene, Right behind it were the traditionally made antigen vaccines just a couple of months behind that yeah. didn't have the power of money uh, of production. Uh, people forget that. And they don't get the, the side effects and they don't get, they don't seem to get this turn off of immunity that we see with messenger RNA. And I just want to emphasize that, John, because um, you, you, I know, I think you've talked about AGG4, have you, in some of your sessions? B b we briefly, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, just think of it as a marker of suppression. Yes. Uh, a particular molecule appears. The, the immune know, system is actually immune. damping things down. Yeah, it's saying you're getting turn off. Yes. It occurs only, only with the messenger RNA vaccines. It was not described with the DNA. Oh, really? That's interesting. And it's not been described with the antigen vaccines. Right. Interesting, isn't it? Now, I'm sure that if you use enough of them, you will find it because it's yeah. a marked turnoff. What it's pointing to is that you cannot control the dose with messenger RNA vaccines. You have no idea how much is being produced, which, of course, is underpins why people get so many serious uh, adverse events because you're making antigen everywhere and the body's responding to that and destroying the organ systems, yeah. like an autoimmune disease. So uh, you're getting uncontrolled antigens and most importantly, the antigens aren't being presented in the way physiologically they're presented. If you inject a tetanus vaccine, it goes to the lymph node, which is made as a factory to make antibodies and T cells. Whereas if you're injecting the messenger RNA, it goes through the bloodstream, every cell's making it, and you're not selectively presenting yes. to the right factory. You're sending, you're sending a message to a factory that makes bread yeah. uh, instead of making steel. Um, so so, so, so the, the RNA is expressing an antigen, say, in a cell in the vascular endothelium of the yeah. coronary arteries. Yeah. Whereas the antigen is expressing the antigen where it should be in your in your lymph nodes. To the antigen presenting in the lymph nodes, which yeah, are the, to, the, to, to the specialised yeah. antigen presenting cells that live yeah. there. And the DNA, you know, the poor old DNA vaccine, which uh, 
uh, got promptly uh, uh, expedited. Um, it wasn't a great vaccine, but it, it's a better one, a safer one than the uh, messenger RNA ones. Um, it, it, well, no, it, this is the new one. So, so, the, so it's easy to confuse the DNA vaccines with the DNA yeah. virus vector vaccines. You don't mean that. Right. So, yes, yeah, sorry. So, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm talking about the, the vector vaccines. They, they are relatively confined to the lymph nodes. They, they do spread a bit, but not as much as the messenger. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Interesting. Didn't know that. Yep. Robert, excellent. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm just uh, <laughs> my mind's always a bit stunned at the end of these. It's just so much, so much good stuff. But um, gonna have to play that back again. But uh, but for now, as always, thanks for coming on. Absolutely, absolutely oh, brilliant. Good. And and we um, th this will be available in Quadrant. We'll post the link. And I think I think we yeah, can probably tease people March, with the first the few March, paragraphs. The March edition. Quadrant's yeah. a wonderful magazine. So you know, go and. I don't have any financial, but no, no, neither do I. But we will put the link. <laughs> but buy it, <laughs> not because of me, because it's a very good magazine. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's it's a re it's just a really really good read, and it's uh, as I say, objectivity is an open debate, which is what we want. Great, Professor. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, John. It is indeed.